The Guided Video Creator Tool makes it as easy as possible to edit and deliver your movies. To launch the Guided Video Creator, start a new project. From the Welcome screen, first select the kind of movie you want to create. For this tutorial, I'll use the default widescreen option. Next, click the Guided Video Creator button. This launches a simple step-by-step -step process. First, use the Add Media dialog box to navigate to the folder on your computer drives that holds your video and still image files that you've already saved to your computer. Select the files you want to use. To select multiple files, hold the Control key as you click on each file you want. When you've selected everything you want, click the Open button. The Guided Video Creator window now appears and holds all of the files you've added. If you want to add more files, either from the same or a different location on your computer, click the Add button to open the Add Media dialog box again. Navigate to the new location, select the files you want, and click the Open button. You can keep doing this to add as many media files as you want. When you've added files to your project, you haven't yet added them to your timeline, the area you see at the bottom of the screen. We'll do that next, but first let's look at a few options. If you've added a file that you now decide you don't want in your video, select the file in the Guided Movie Creator window and click the Remove button. Let's not do this now, but if you want to remove all of the files quickly and start over, you can click the Clear All button. To rearrange the order of the files in your movie, drag one file and drop it onto another. This moves your file so that it appears just before the file you dropped it on. When you have all of the files you want in your movie and have arranged them in the order that you want, you're ready to add them to your project timeline. Click the Next button. You can now see your files in your project timeline, but you can also see a large label that indicates that the timeline is a power user mode feature. Don't do this now, but you can leave the guided video creator anytime you decide to and work in power user mode or one of the other modes. In this way, you can use the guided video creator tool as a quick arrangement tool and use the other modes to edit your project. Again, don't do this now, but to enter Power User Mode, click either the Power User Mode button in the Guided Video Creator or the Power User Mode label in the project timeline. For this tutorial, we'll continue with the Guided Video Creator to produce our movie. In this new screen, you can decide how you want to move from one clip in your movie to the next. To cut from one clip to the next with no transition between clips, select the No, I do not want any fades or transitions radio button. If you want to create crossfades between clips, where the first clip fades out while the next clip simultaneously fades in, select the I want fades radio button. Finally, to create interesting transitions between each clip, select the I want transitions radio button. Let's add fades to the project. Select the I want fades radio button again. Before we move on, notice in the project timeline that the timeline clip events that hold your media butt right up against each other. They do not overlap. This is the way your project will look if you decide not to add fades or transitions. To see what it looks like, click the Play button in the Video Preview window. The project plays through the first clip and you can watch the results in the Video Preview window. When the first clip completes, the video instantly jumps from the first to the second clip. Back in the Guided Video Creator window, notice that you can click the Previous button at any time to go back to the previous screen. If you decided to add more video to your movie, you could go back to that screen and add it. In this case, we'll move to the next step, so click the Next button. Since we chose to add fades between clips, notice that the timeline clip events now overlap each other, and you can see a blue X in the overlap areas. These are your fades. To see what it looks like, click the Play button again. As usual, you can return to the previous screen if you decide you don't like the fades after all. Click the Previous button now. This time, select the I Want Transitions radio button and click Next. Notice that in the video track, the fade X's have been replaced by transitions. On this new screen, you can add text to the beginning of your movie. If you leave the text box blank, no text will appear. But let's add some text now. Click in the Text field and type the title of your movie. When you're done, click the Next button. Notice that now your movie starts with a title. You can add a music or other audio file to your movie in this screen. To do so, click the Browse button. Navigate to the computer drive that holds the file you want to use. Select the file. And click Open. Now, click Next.
In the timeline, you see that your audio file has been added to a new track. On the final screen of the guided video creator, you can specify how you want to deliver your movie, or you can delete this movie and go back to the beginning. And of course, you can still switch to the power user mode anytime for detailed editing. Let's assume we want to keep the movie we've been working on and we want to post it to our YouTube channel. Select the Upload It to Social Media checkbox and the YouTube radio button. Then click Apply. If you also left the Save the Project File to the default Project Folder checkbox selected, use the Save As dialog box to give your movie a name and save it. Once you've done that, the Upload to YouTube function kicks in. Enter the required information and click the Upload button. And that's how easy the guided video creator makes producing your movies in Vegas Movie Studio.